Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture 10 of applied ergonomics. Uh, we were talking about manual systems in the last lecture, uh, particularly manual systems related to work study where there is uh, the involvement from um, manual subjects and also hand tools. So, basically the power uh, that goes into any operation comes from a human subject that is how you interpret the manual systems. We also talked about <coughs> briefly about various other systems like man machine systems as well as fully automated systems, although we did not delve into the details of it. So, this particular lecture is intended to give you an idea of what we mean when we talk about man machine systems or automated systems, what are the different uh, associated paraphernalia associated with these systems. Uh, so, let us look at what <coughs> we mean by a worker machine system or a man machine system. So, um, as from earlier definition it is quite clear that if you are using powered equipments where there is uh, a scope of doing on own uh, by the equipment concerned it is considered to be a worker machine system. So, of course, the role of a worker there is completely related to loading and loading uh, you know changing the different conditions of machining or even the tools from time to time and uh, the support system that in general needs to be done for an interrupted uh, operation sequence on the machine is being provided by the worker. So, he is a very important component uh, <coughs> in such complex systems, <coughs> but once the loading and loading has been done and the basic operation is to be performed, the power does not come by the human subject, but from the machine itself and power could come for example, in a transfer press uh, which is mechanical from <coughs> a, uh, a big motor or for example, hydraulic on a big uh, set of cylinders with uh, different oil and other pneumatic circuitry associated uh, oil circuitry associated. So, uh, so these are classified into worker machine system. Some examples could be machinist operating a milling machine once the uh, milling machine has been set up and the indexing has been done uh, the uh, the arbor as well as the tooling as well as the uh, uh, the work piece is mounted. Now, it is uh, left after switch on button you know it is left onto the motor of the milling machine to perform the power addition to the machine and uh, drive the various stages in sequence. So, that there can be gear cutting or something some operation which can happen or it is int intended to happen. <coughs> Similarly, uh, is the plight of a construction worker operating on a backhoe uh, or a truck driver driving a 18 wheeler. So, basically all the power that is needed to uh, carry the load push the vehicle is done by the engine, but uh, the control on the engine rests on the truck driver who basically uh, is the worker for such a worker machine system. Uh, there could be other examples like worker crew, uh, uh, worker crew operating on a rolling mill or a clerical work <coughs> worker entering data into a PC. So, all the uh, data entry steps and preservation into memory uh, both uh, you know random access memory and read only memory are done by the PC through a powered mode, but the clerical worker is helpful for just inserting relevant data. So, all the computation the processing is done by <coughs> the processor. So, these are examples from <coughs> daily life of worker machine systems. Now, there are different relative strengths and weaknesses uh, that any system does have in case of strengths for humans. Um, you know there are various strength components which we might consider for example, human subjects can sense unexpected stimuli can respond to such changes in stimuli. Uh, they can also solve problems quickly uh, cope with abstract problems through uh, knowledge as well as intuition adapt to change. <coughs> for example, there is a sudden change condition uh, there is a quick adaptability uh, generalized from observations. Okay. So, if you have experiential observation then that is the best uh, part which a person can use uh, knowledge domain from his previous uh, work sphere and up as applied to the current work sphere for any changing situation or a problem which emerges. So, these are some of the relative strengths also uh, make decisions on incomplete data. So, these are some strengths related with the human subjects. However, when we talk about strengths related to the machines, uh, the biggest strength that the machines would have is that they perform repetitive operations consistently. There is a powered mode, there is a distribution of power and all it needs is to set up the power in a particular uh, manner. So, that there is repetition of tasks undertaken by the machine. Uh, it can store large amounts of information. So, uh, there is uh, the capability nowadays of both storing as well as processing 
uh, where you can retrieve the data from the memory reliably, apply high forces and power based on some of the data which comes and make routine decisions quickly. So, these are some uh, very important strengths uh, that machines would have and so basically the idea behind designing the worker machine system is to combine the relative strengths of each with respect to one another so that there can be a correct mapping okay, uh, in, 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 in that sense. So, when we talk about different powered equipments, <laughs> there are different power uh, equipments available based on whether they are portable or mobile or stationary. So, for example, let us look at portable power drills, chainsaws, electric head trimmers, these are some equipments which are power tools, they are actually either having a wire, uh, wired orientation or even a battery operated orientation or in some cases, for example, uh, when we talk about chainsaws, etcetera, there can also be uh, you know uh, or, or electric hedge, hedge trimmers, there can also be engines associated with such tools. So, there is some source which emanates the power and it is mobile okay, uh, or it is portable, not mobile really, but portable. Okay. So, basically you can lift from one place to another and uh, you can do uh, different operations <coughs> through that such kind of tools. <coughs> there are mobile power tools where there is uh, you know a certain mobility like for example, an engine mounted on the top of a chassis. Uh, moving ahead, okay. For example, in case of forklift trucks, for example, or let's say uh, generators, which are transported to the construction site to generate electric power, transportation equipment as such, all cars, buses, trucks, uh, all railway uh, systems, uh, railway engines, they are all associated with a power unit, which is in form of an engine or which it's in form of a generator. Uh, even sometimes gas turbines uh, smaller in size, which would actually uh, be able to uh, go from one place to another through uh, you know in a in a chassis driven uh, carriage. Okay. So, uh, those are mobile powered equipments. So, these equipments are typically uh, used in a lot of heavy industry work. Uh, then there are stationary powered machines. For example, there are machine tools, lathe, milling, where there is need and necessity of somehow preventing vibration by creating a firm base and then grouting the machine to a certain area. So, it makes the, the equipment completely stationary at a certain place. You have office equipment, cash registers, heat treatment furnaces, where if you station it at a place, generally it is not advisable to move it out of that place. So, these are sort of powered equipments in various industrial uh, and other work machine systems, which uh, have different types or uh, based on uh, how they perform, what they are <coughs> supposedly performing. It is sort of a classification into the different you know uh, types of how uh, they can be carried out or uh, carried over or how power can be applied. <coughs> so, uh, there can also be differences in terms of the numbers of workers and the number of machines associated with each other. For example, there can be a case of one worker, one machine. Uh, Let us look at uh, the example of a taxi cab driver and taxi. Okay. So, this is something which is uh, <coughs> talking about uh, the taxi being the machine and the taxi cab driver being uh, the worker itself. So, there is exactly one person controlling one machine. There can be a case where one worker controls multiple machines. For example, sometimes there may be more than uh, one machines in a machine cluster. Okay. So, uh, let us say we are talking about an engine automotive engine shop and there are multiple machining centers on this engine shop. Uh, typically, they are done on a S type layout, on a U type layout, where there are machines and inspection stations in between. And such uh, machining uh, clusters are also referred to commonly as transfer lines, where there is a entry of the uh, uh, the object or the workpiece to be machined from one side, and it goes through roller conveyors as it goes to the different machining stations, where there is a continuous loading, unloading, and also inspection carried out. So, in such kind of systems. There may be multiple machining centers all running on <coughs> CNC capabilities or processes uh, which are fairly automatic in nature, but then there are certain operators who are involved in loading uh, the workpiece, checking the workpiece for its initial uh, let us say uh, cylinder in a the finish of the cylinder liner etcetera and then later on as <coughs> the, the equipment or, or later on as the unit, the work unit moves ahead, uh, it, it completely goes to the machine domain and then comes out back you know again when the operator can finally inspect and take back and carry it or load it 
to uh, another container. So, this is one worker, multiple machines kind of situations. There can be also a case of multiple workers, one machine for example, let us say when we talk about uh, running a uh, big transportation unit like a ship or for example, uh, an airplane or even like uh, you know a, a train, there are going to be multiple stakeholders who will be uh, associated with running this. For example, typically an airplane has a pilot and a co-pilot. So, there are more than one workers for this one machine to carry ahead or even in railway engines or in railway <coughs> uh, in, in, in trains, there may be uh, three, four operators, two of them on the engine side, one on the signaling side. And so, there is a way that they communicate with each other and run this whole system. So, that is again an example of multiple workers, one machine. There can also be a case of multiple workers, multiple machines. For example, when we talk about emergency repair crew responding to machine breakdowns, it is possible that you have to uh, <coughs> remove the problem or you have to start the facility in a relatively shorter amount of time and it may be worthwhile to put more than one skilled people uh, on the job who can actually go to multiple work centers and who can take corrective actions or measures so that quickly the system can be revamped okay, or uh, set initially back, back to zero condition so that it can operate. So, this is a case where you have multiple workers and multiple machines. So, there are numerous such examples where <coughs> the number of workers and machines could vary with respect to one another when we talk about worker machine system design. So, then we talk about the uh, level of operator attention which is involved in such systems. So, for example, there can be cases where the operator uh, who is involved in performing uh, on the work machine system may have to give attention for full amount of time that is involved with the machine. Let us talk about a case of welder uh, or welding operation performed by arc welding. So, the arc is generated whenever the operator itself, the operator concerned is basically able to take the, uh, the carbon electrode very near, the, take the electrode welding electrode very near the work piece and then suddenly shift back so that there is an arc created. Now, once the arc is created, then it is completely in the operator's control uh, and the gap needs to be maintained so that there is uh, on one side molten flow of material uh, where the electrode size reduces and the gap needs to be continuously uh, <coughs> changed or gap needs to be continuously maintained by the worker by moving the molting, melting electrode. Uh, nearer and nearer to the work piece, uh, so that you know you can ensure that the arc uh, sustains itself. Okay. So, so these kind of op uh, operations does involve almost full time attention for the person concerned person working on the system or if I talk about let us say a slightly automated mode, uh, where <coughs> we are talking about uh, let us say tungsten inert gas welding or some other process, where there is a feedstock which is actually giving uh, a wire electrode and feeding it out away from the nozzle, uh, but still there is always a tendency of the concern, unless it is fully automatic machine, there is a tendency of the worker to actually guide the nozzle into the area where welding has to be uh, executed. So, therefore, there is always a full scale attention of this worker till and until the welding process, the actual process of uh, molten metal reflowing into or flowing into the gap uh, and, and joining to let us say parent metals. That, that process continues. So, these are all uh, processes which would seek full time attention. There are also part time attention during each work cycle uh, kind of systems. Uh, for example, I talked to you about a machine shop uh, where the only work that could be done, let us say we are talking about a CNC machine. So, only work which could be performed by a worker unless uh, there is some in between in intervention needed because of programming error or some other issue during the cycle. So, it is at the beginning of the cycle and end of the cycle. Okay, and the beginning of the cycle typically has work components like loading, unloading, uh, even change of tooling, inspection of tooling, so on and so forth. And then towards the end of the cycle, again these issues are revisited, so that the next cycle can be started. So, in that kind of a setup, you do not need to continuously attend to the machine once you have uh, loaded, unloaded the sample and then you know also checked about uh, the tooling systems, etcetera. Uh, and you have also seen that all the uh, zero setting is being done, all the <coughs> let us say uh, backlash errors etcetera have been removed, then you leave it onto the machine and let the work cycle continue on its own. So, during the time the work cycle is continuing, even if you do not attend to the machine, 
is going to do its job properly. So, therefore, you need only part time attention during each work cycle in such cases. So, we say that worker loading and unloading a production machine in a semi automatic cycle could be such an example. There can be <coughs> other cases where the level of attention could be periodic with regular servicing. For example, when we operate a crane okay, in a steel mill, uh, you need to be also uh, very careful about probably at every shift end seeing all the joints and all the cables and inspecting uh, the different let us say components associated with the crane for snappage, snap and uh, breakage and also fatigue. So, that you know you do not uh, have any accidents you know in the next cycle of operation. So, there is a preventive maintenance which is needed probably at the end of every shift or end of every let us say uh, work cycle sometimes work cycle period sometimes because you need to uh, make sure that the, the, the object after surfacing is safe enough for the next cycle okay, or it can get carried away in the next cycle without uh, much of a problem. So, uh, so, such attention systems or such systems can be uh, referred to as uh, systems where the worker is periodically attending to the, to the concerned problem and then uh, there could be uh, another kind of system where there is periodic attention with random servicing. For example, uh, there could be firefighters responding to alarms. So, these are some issues where the alarm can only be set in when there is one in a kind of incident of a smoke or a fire coming out of a building and uh, in order to show the emergency preparedness, uh, there are also fire drills from time to time where the alarm is uh, set off you know intentionally to see how uh, prepared the team is to address uh, the issue. So, but then in this particular case the, the attention falls in a periodic manner, but you know on a random basis the, the demand comes up for such service or such uh, attention. And so, you have to be prepared, uh, you have to have a wing of your organization which is already prepared to meet any such kind of emergency uh, level operation. So, these are the different levels of operator attentions that could one could possibly think of when designing the worker machine system. We can uh, then look at uh, you know cycle time analysis for such systems. We have done the same uh, in case of manual systems. So, in case of worker machine systems, we also have uh, a scope for analyzing uh, how much time would be needed to execute a particular operation on such worker machine system. So, there are typically two categories in terms of cycle time analysis uh, of such systems you know uh, or what kind of cycle time is related to those systems in which machine time depends on operator control. In fact, if I looked at a power saw being operated or a let us say uh, a, you know power saw used for cutting the lumber uh, by a carpenter or in fact, let us say we when we are talking about uh, digging drills for concrete etcetera, where uh, a section of the road is being uh, excavated. So, in, in these kind of situations, whenever the operator initiates the work, the machine is merely an aid to give a power factor to his work. And uh, those in those systems, the you can say that the machine time totally depends on the operator control. If today, if we have a uh, operator who is actually uh, let us say working for uh, at 50 percent efficiency throughout a shift of about 4 hours. It means that if he has or if he has been allocated to such a work center where his operation <coughs> is dependent on how much can be get uh, how much can be done really <coughs> with the power tool that he uses as a aid. So, in that event uh, the efficiency of uh, the machine even though there is a capital investment will fall down. So, typically when you do job alignments you have to look at the efficiency of individuals and those people uh, who are more efficient to a job will typically be aligned to machines which are where the cycle time depends on the worker itself. Okay. So, you are using the powered tool for all times to get more amount of work done that is the whole idea while doing a work system design for worker machine kind of systems. Uh, so, the cycle time analysis is same as manual work cycle because obviously, whenever the effort is being done by the human being the power although coming from machine does not make much of a difference of the time you know. So, the amount of time that the human being does effort in terms of let us say uh, thinking or um, pressing buttons or uh, you know somehow controlling uh, a machine would typically be the work that is being rendered by the machine itself. There is no additional work in com uh, done by the machine uh, 
when it comes to finding out the total working time. Now, there may be another yet another class of uh, machines where uh, machine time is constant and independent of operator control. For example, let us say a system which is semi automatic. For example, we were talking about this transfer lines for machine shops which has a cluster of CNC machines. So, here the loading unloading time is quote unquote the time which the operator needs. Uh, apart from that whatever is being done is being carried out by a machine with a machine cycle time. So, once the machine has been loaded and it has been powered on then really everything is out of control of the operator and in control of the processor. And so, in such cases also the cycle time of the machine depends on the program or in, in the control uh, the level of control that is there in the machine rather than on the operator. But there is a small component of the operator contributing uh, in terms of loading and loading which shifts that start point ahead in time and which may uh, lead to an overall extension in the work cycle time. So, so, there we have to also see how much delay is being done by the operator for actually the productive cycle of the machine to uh, sort of maneuver all portions of the working time cycle in totality. So, uh, such, such analysis has to be carried out in terms of uh, classifying systems into where it depends totally on operator what is the machining time and uh, in system 2 where it depends on the machine, uh, but subjected to the fact when the operator starts the machine. Okay. So, that is how you uh, analyze for cycle times in these work machine systems. So, uh, so there is typically no overlap uh, <coughs> between worker and machine. Uh, typically worker work elements and machine elements are uh, sort of worker elements and machine elements are sequential in nature. Uh, for example, when the worker is busy the machine is idle and vice versa. So, therefore, uh, while studying or while uh, let us say demarcating into different elements uh, of work, it is important for one to estimate what is the uh, total amount of time uh, spent by the worker for the cycle uh, to operate and the machine time in, in unison. So, in such a case the normal time of the cycle the work cycle can be referred to as the time which is needed for um, the worker to perform normally, uh, where he initiates the machine or starts the machine plus the machine time. Okay. So, these are added together in sequence for estimating the normal time. So, uh, in this particular case if we wanted to compute the standard time, the standard time would really be uh, related to the, the normal time of a worker. Uh, times the allowance factor here due to uh, various issues like uh, delays or uh, the performance or uh, fatigue kind of factors. And I think we have extensively discussed this while doing manual work systems as well as work systems in general. Um, and then there is a similar kind of idle time related to <coughs> machining because obviously there are uh, certain uh, slacks in time which you cannot avoid. For example, slack involved in uh, collocating something to the origin or resetting back the machine, there is a stage movement which happens from the existing position particularly in CNC based controls uh, from the existing position that the machine is in to the position which is called reference 0. Okay. So, these kind of motions are out of control uh, and uh, these kind of motions do consume time and so therefore, there has to be an allowance factor for calculating the even machining time with such kind of machining based uh, you know idle components uh, which are necessary evils. So, therefore, the standard time of the cycle now is obtained through this particular formulation here which talks about the normal time of the worker plus times of a 1 plus a p f d plus uh, the normal the, the, the total time that the machine uh, would be operating or the cycle time of the machine times of 1 plus idle time or let us say the allowance factor given to the machine. So, this is how you calculate the standard time for the whole work cycle. So, uh, mind you in the uh, only worker or only manual system this was completely dependent on the worker and so this component was 0 or missing in this particular system because there is a sequence which is followed where the worker first works and then the machine starts operating. So, therefore, both the times are included for calculating the overall cycle time sequence. So, that is how you uh, calculate the worker machine with uh, assuming almost no overlap between uh, the ending of one. Uh, processor operation in uh, starting of the other. So, then we can classify uh, 
work elements into internal and external types, generally it is probably a prudent idea to uh, make work, uh, more and more work elements of the internal type and let us look at what they are. So, uh, some of the worker elements are performed while the machine is working. Uh, so, you can say that the internal work elements are performed simultaneously with the machine cycle and uh, the external work elements are where work is performed outside the machining cycle. Okay. So, now if the machining cycle includes loading, unloading and the operation time, uh, something like rework okay, which may come because of inappropriate machining could be considered as the work external work element because it is outside the cycle time. It is happened one in a basis one uh, let us say in one in hundred cases or something where <coughs> you need reworking because <coughs> probably a tooling got damaged in that particular machine cycle or something happened and it is quite random. It is not that it will uh, prop up in every cycle. Okay. So, in such kind of cases these are the external work elements which are out of the machining cycle which otherwise uh, includes only the loading unloading the inspection and the machining time. So, uh, we must uh, in our whole design agenda try to uh, put more emphasis on as much as internal work elements and reduce as uh, much as external work elements from a system. So, if we can avoid non compliances where there are sudden prop ups of work elements which are outside the cycle and which are undesirable, they should be avoided as much as possible. That is the whole idea behind designing. So, when you are trying to look at work elements and you know it is always prudent for you to uh, generate as much as internal work elements, probably you uh, take some more inspection measures within the machining operation. So, that such kind of non-compliances seldom occur or their percentage reduces more, uh, maybe they become in PPM. Okay. So, uh, try to avoid the external work elements uh, which will be performed sequentially with the machine cycle. So, while designing the work cycle. So, now uh, I think we will focus a little more on automated work systems and what do we mean by this terminology. So, so far we have looked at manual systems and manual uh, uh, or machine work systems, but we have not really looked at cases where everything is controlled by uh, a set of robots or a set of machines which are there on the line. For example, uh, when we talk about PCB assemblies or let us say electronic assemblies for uh, different components like handy cams or video cameras or uh, let us say uh, even you know uh, record players or CD players. So, we are looking at assembly lines which are completely operated through uh, a, a set of robots and there is hardly any human intervention there. So, such kind of a work system where uh, automation as a technology is used by which a process or a procedure is accomplished without any human assistance is known as a automated work system. Okay, so, an automatic work system typically would then uh, be implemented using a program of instructions which are timed in a way and they are combined with a control system that executes such instructions in a proper manner in a uh, and, and, and things related to cycle time etcetera are predefined in the program. So, what you are uh, trying to establish is to standardize everything in terms of what you lay out in terms of such program codes and now it all remains as to how the controller interprets it and implements it and how fast it is or rapid it is and there you have very less possibility of slack because all controllers are designed to operate at quite a bit of speed. So, how much uh, so it all depends on how much time the processor takes to really process the data uh, and implement the data and so therefore, you have everything more deterministic in nature and very less chances of miss occurrence or let us say uh, things which will uh, create you know uh, external uh, elements work elements uh, and everything can be within the cycle or planned within the cycle or cycle time accordingly. So, power is typically required to drive uh, the process and operate such a control system. Uh, there are many examples uh, of semi automated and fully automated machines. For example, if I looked at the levels of automated systems, uh, there can be semi automatic machines which perform a portion of the work cycle under some form of program control. There is a human subject or a worker who tends uh, the machine for rest of the cycle. Uh, for example, loading and loading or maybe even checking uh, the tooling quality as well as that of uh, the you know the machine work piece. Operator has to be there in every cycle because unless his attention is there to start and stop the process, the process would not work. 
and then there is a fully automated machine which operates an extend uh, for for extended periods of time with no human attention okay so such systems are where um, all you need to do is to sort of press a button and uh, everything else is taken care of by the system alone so uh, this particular photograph shows uh, a automatic uh, robotic spot welding cell uh, on an assembly line for uh, you know the photo has been pulled from Ford Motor Corporation. So, you can see these uh, this welding robots typically put spots. Okay. So, spot welding is mostly uh, the most common means of welding carried out in automotive assemblies. So, here for example, the robo is probably working on uh, a machine panel or uh, a press panel uh, which is a section of a car and trying to uh, create some spot welds between two or more sheets. And so, such a system can be called fully automatic system because once you have switched on the press button, uh, it is pretty much out of control of your domain uh, unless the whole cycle gets executed okay, and the, the, the machine is ready for the next cycle. So, I think we will stop uh, this lecture here, but in the next lecture, we will talk uh, a little more about industrial safety, uh, hazards, some regulatory means and measures which are available uh, and uh, uh, we will see how the factor of safety can be integrated with whatever we have said so far in terms of work system design, uh, so that it becomes you know uh, overall a reasonable level of work environment uh, for all sides including uh, the, the human beings as well as the uh, work system side to work in harmony. So, uh, uh, we will finish this lecture as of now, thank you very much, thanks.